camera working here real quick. All right, good morning um, at SOC schools. We have resource specialists and our SDC teachers. Uh, we may have some administrators in on this as well. Uh, good morning, thank you for taking the time. Uh, this is technically still your vacation, so we appreciate you taking the time. Um, but we think this uh, curriculum, you guys are definitely going to want to see this and uh, we're excited about us using it. Um, there will not be a uh, separate place to go to take attendance. I'm just going to take attendance based on the chat and things going on there. So if you could help me right now, um, go ahead and just type good morning in the attendance. That way I know you're here with us. Uh, by the way, my name is Joe Michelina. I'm the Modesto City Schools math coordinator. And uh, Veronica Davalos will be on this call with us as well. Uh, she's already on. Uh, we are going to try to manage the chat uh, while this is happening. And um, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Carlton with Savis. And uh, we are very fortunate and thankful to have him here leading us through. So Carlton, it's all you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to go online for a second and show my face. I uh, wish I could be there in person and uh, Loved working with you guys in the past, and I'm excited to share this program with you. I know that some of you do have some experience with it, but a lot of you don't, and that's okay. We're going to jump right in there, and um, uh, we're going to approach the, the program um, basically as if you've never seen it, um, and uh, we're going to walk you through the most important components, and I'll share the agenda and the objectives here in, in just a second. But but just to let you know, my, my secret goal is that you guys will feel comfortable enough with the program that um, when school starts, you'll be ready to jump in there, um, start assigning things to your students and, um, you know, uh, learning how to access all the materials and the content um, and that we can support you guys not only in your distance learning, but also when you come back and meet with your students in, in person as well. Now, I want to turn my camera off for now just to save bandwidth and, and that seems to make things run a little more smoothly. And um, if you do have any questions, feel free to jump in anytime. Ask me those questions. Also, um, um, you can uh, chat those in, and Joe will let me know if you guys have questions uh, or, or not as well. So uh, again, please, anytime, jump in there and, and let us know if you guys have any questions, all right? So um, this is the agenda that we're going to go over uh, today, and we only have two hours, so it's going to be pretty quick and, and, and pretty dense. But I'm also going to make sure that I leave you guys with um, uh, materials and places to go online where you can get the help you need um, as you go. So if you can't remember everything today, that's perfectly fine. Uh, no one is, is expecting you to. I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm, I leave you with the tools that you'll need so that, uh, you know, on your uh, uh, during your planning time, your spare time, whatever, you can jump in there and very quickly find what you need. So here's the agenda for the day. And then finally, these are the things that um, uh, you're going to go away with. And most importantly is that last one, plan for instruction. I want to make sure that um, you guys have the tools that you need so that, you know, first week school, you feel good about using this curriculum with your students. And being uh, special ed and resource teachers, I know that you in particular have, um, uh, you know, um, special um, needs that, that you need to fill for your students. And uh, so we're going to look at, at, at a lot of the, the, uh, the tools that are included in the program uh, that will help you guys, too, in terms of differentiation, accommodations, and so forth. All right. So now the, this is what your students uh, have access to. I just want to show you this quickly. And that includes the student companion. Um, and Joe, um, if you wouldn't mind me interrupting here for just a second, I, I do want to confirm, will students be getting their print materials uh, somehow um, at the beginning of the school year? Those should already have been arriving at the sites. And um, yeah, it's up to the sites how they plan on getting those. They should have their student edition textbook and the student uh, companion workbook. Cool. All right, good. Good deal. So. Um, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. So uh, your students will have the print materials. The student companion is a consumable that your district will receive every year. So your students can uh, write all in that student companion, uh, take their notes, their examples in there that your students can work on. Um, and uh, in a, a few minutes, I'll show you what a student companion looks like so you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's a very powerful tool. 
and used in conjunction with the online platform, I think your students are, are going to uh, enjoy their, uh, their math experience here. So these are the components that your students will have. And then these are the components that you as teachers have. Um, everything is online. You will be able to reference um, uh, everything, whether it's in, in PDF doc format or digital interactives, um, uh, Math Excel, assignments, everything. Everything that you see here is, is available to you online. You can do all your planning digitally. The only exception to that is the student companion. That is not available online. It's a print only resource and I suggest uh, teachers if you can get yourselves a, a copy of that and, and most likely it is included in your uh, teacher's materials, then you will um, know what the, the, the students are working on as well. All right. So for today, I'm gonna have you guys log into the Modesto City Schools account that we created uh, last year for, uh, or last school year rather, uh, for the, the pilot program. So if folks, you could on your browser there, uh, navigate to savasrealize.com. And I always like to say, look at these happy math students. This is how your math students are gonna look every day in class, just so excited about math now. Uh, but if you could navigate to savasrealize.com, and then you're going to click the sign in button. And when you do, these are the credentials that you will use to sign in. Now, later, uh, Joe and Veronica will tell you guys how you're going to access your actual account. And the good news. Um, and as I said, Joel, fill you, uh, fill you guys in on, on the details later on. The good news is that your classes are going to be going to be um, set up for you, and um, uh, your core, your classes are going to be rostered. All your students are going to be in there. It's going to be basically a single sign-on experience for you and your students. So it's great because as a teacher, you don't have to worry about managing passwords and managing managing uh, the roster. Uh, if there are any changes in the classroom. If a student comes in within 24 hours, it will be reflected in your account. If a student moves out, same thing, within 24 hours, that will be reflected in their account. So we, we, we try to make management of the, the platform itself and your courses as simple as possible. So that's what's going on uh, here. All right. So I am going to assume, uh, hope, that you guys are able to log in now. And again, if not, Please jump in there and let me know if I need to slow down or, or chat Joe and he can uh, let me know as well. But when you first log in, your account is going to look like something like this. And Joe, could you just confirm that you see my um, Savas Realize homepage here? Yeah, you're up with the homepage. We got it. Okay, awesome. All right. So your account's going to look something like this. Now, when you first get your personal account, you'll have the opportunity to um, uh, personalize it. You can select your background and your, uh, the name that you want to appear. It's a four-step process. Um, and your students, the same thing. When they get their account, they'll be able to personalize it by choosing a background and, and an icon, an avatar that they, they may want to choose for themselves. Uh, but for right now, this is what the account looks like. And... Um, what you see is almost exactly the same as what students see. So one of the nice things about these accounts is that you don't have to worry about setting up an account for yourself as a teacher, because if you see it here with a few exceptions that we'll, we'll get into, uh, then your students are going to be able to see it too. So you don't have to worry about, well, what are students seeing versus what I see? Um, and we're going to take a tour of the Realize platform. So this is Realize. This is our web page that drives the curriculum. And you're going to hear me refer to it as platform. That's, that's, um, uh, but, but, but I'm talking about the, the web page, which is very sophisticated, has many, many layers. And I'm going to call it the Savas Realize platform. So if I say platform, this is what I'm talking about and all the components that we're going to explore here. Now, obviously, the first thing is you're going to notice the three big circles right in the middle, browse, classes, and data. And um, browse is where all of your curriculum, uh, all your curricula will live. Uh, 
classes. Um, I'm sure you guys know what that is. That's where all your classes are going to be. You'll be able to see your student rosters, et cetera. And then finally, data. That is where uh, you'll be able to check grades and, and look at um, uh, student progress and so forth. Now, we'll be digging into those three components uh, in detail soon. So I just wanted to, you know, uh, uh, remark on those since it is so obvious and they're right there, uh, right in front of us. But we're going to begin our tour of the real life platform by looking at the silhouette in the top right corner. So let me turn on my uh, halo on my cursor here. Hopefully you guys can see this and and uh, so it'll be a little bit easier to, to follow uh, my cursor. And I'm going to click on that uh, that silhouette. And when I do, uh, you can see that uh, I get some things that pop up. So on your accounts, uh, settings here is where you would go in. So I, I, I clicked on settings. Uh, this is where you would go and change your uh, username, your, I mean, um, uh, your email, your password. This is where you can add programs to your, um, uh, to your platform. And this is important because the way that uh, Modesto City Schools has, uh, or, or the relationship that Modesto has with um, Savas Realize is that every teacher gets access to all math levels, regardless of which class you're teaching. So if you're just teaching an algebra one course, or maybe a geometry course, um, you can also add the other courses as well. Now, the reason I say that is because you might have an algebra one student who is advanced and uh, you know may need to be challenged with materials from Algebra 2. You can add the Algebra 2 content to your personal account by looking at my programs, finding the Algebra, uh, algebra 2 and Geometry, uh, click the checkbox next to those titles and then save. And now you'll have all three of those curricula titles in your personal teacher's library. And then you can assign uh, resources from any of those classes to your students. Now, the demo course has access to tons of different uh, curricula. Your actual account will only have the math curricula. So I just want to point that out. Uh, but this is how you would add you know, content to your personal teacher library. And uh, then the, the last tab here, the About Me tab, this is where you would change that background I told you about and all that good stuff, all right? so. That is settings here. If you go to announcements, these are announcements for you as a teacher. If uh, there's any news, uh, any updates, any, you know, if the, the system's going to be down for, um, uh, for updates and maintenance, you'll get those announcements here. Um, I'm going to close that. And, and, and notice, by the way, um, at the top of the page here, when I clicked announcements, it opened in a new tab. Uh, most of the content on our website opens in a new tab in your browser. That way, uh, if you click on Realize here, this tab that says Realize, um, you, you, you know, can toggle between the two resources very easily. And uh, that way you won't get, uh, you know, you don't close your um, original uh, account and have to log in again and all that stuff. So most things open in a new tab. Well, I'm going to close this tab because we don't need this right now. And then finally, sign out. Obviously, that means that uh, it will uh, you know, sign you out of your account. Uh, now, by default, after two hours of inactivity, uh, your account will automatically be signed out. Um, but you know, if, if uh, someone else needs to log into their account on your computer or you know, whatever, that's how you sign out. All right. So from there, we're going to continue our tour by looking at the question mark. And this is probably the most important thing that I'm gonna show you all day. Like I said before, we only have two hours. Um, and so, you know, that time is gonna go very, very quickly and trying to remember everything is gonna be tough. Well, this question mark is the go-to place uh, for the future, all right? So everyone click on that question mark, please. And uh, the first thing we're gonna look at um, is the help for this page feature right here help for this page let's click on that and I want you to note that uh, you know we have all kinds of 
of information here about the settings. Basically, this help for this page is contextual depending on where you are in the platform. And uh, you're going to have to bear with me for just a second. Okay, there we go. I have to slide the control panel over because um, if you'll notice, once you clicked on help for this page, at the very bottom, there's this blue rectangle that says open a new window or open a new tab. So go ahead and click that. And this is something that you're definitely going to want to bookmark. So this is like gold in terms of finding the resources and finding the, the, the things that you need uh, right at your fingertips. So notice along the top of the page here, you've got these five drop down um, uh, menus. If I just hover over these drop down menus, the, uh, uh, the content pops up and usually you can find what you're looking for simply by hovering over one of these drop down menus here. And then you can, you know, zoom in on exactly what you need. So in this case, for classes, if I need to know how to uh, create a group, find class groups and then create a group and that will take me to the instructions on how to do that. So once again, I'm going to close this tab, and because it is so important, I, I just want to make sure that um, you guys know how to get there. We click the question mark, help for this page, and then at the very bottom of that page is that blue rectangle. Click open a new window, and here we have all of the help resources that you can access very quickly right there at your fingertips. So go ahead and bookmark that. Um, and remember how to get to it later if, um, you know, uh, if, if you don't bookmark it, but it's right there under the question mark. So I'll close this tab. And I'm going to close the uh, help for this page menu. And I'm going to click on the question mark again. So the next component is program training. Go ahead and click program training, and this is going to take you to our external website, my, mysavvistraining.com. It looks like this. And um, with your personal account, it will automatically log you in to um, my Savvist training as, as you know, so you'll have your own personal account linked here. And then you can very quickly find uh, you know, um, uh, detailed instructions, including videos and, and uh, um, uh, handouts that you can print and, and instructions and, and so forth by uh, clicking the search bar. And what I'd like you to do is uh, search for the following. First of all, search for the word realize. When you search that word realize, I click the magnifying glass. We get uh, four different things that pop up. I want you to make this Savas Realize link a favorite by clicking the star. So to make something a favorite, you will click the star and that will be added to your favorites menu. And uh, that way you don't have to search for it each time because you can very quickly access um, you know, your, your, your favorites and go right to the, the instructions. Now I'm going to click on Savas Realize so that we can see what it looks like. So I click Savas Realize. It takes me to the Realize platform, um, instructions for the Realize platform. And, uh, you know, here's a quick overview video if I want to look at that. Um, and, uh, you know, I can scroll through and, and see what's uh, available to me as quick links. But if you go near the bottom of the page, it says view all training. This is where I want you to go. Click view all training. And uh, we have overview on demand training and note that uh, you know, we have some drop down menus. As a teacher, you have 52 different resources that you can access. So I'll click that just so we can see what it looks like. And this basically shows you 
all of the training resources that we've created that covers the realized platform. And that's how to navigate the realized platform, how to create assignments, uh, you know, how to add groups to your classes, so on and so on. All right. So that's what these, uh, this website, My Sabbath Training, is all about. It's giving you guys access to those on-demand resources. At near the top of the page, or at, at the top of, of this page, there's a chat slash support icon. If you click that, this is where you can start a chat if someone is online and available right now. I can tell no one is online because th this icon is not in color, it's black and white, but I can leave a message if I want someone to, uh, you know, um, answer my question. And then also here is that all important customer uh, tech support phone number right here on the right hand side. And, um, you know, a lot of uh, websites these days are trying to make it more and more difficult to contact a live person. I was trying to contact, um, help uh, someone to help me with a package from USPS, and, and they, I, I don't believe anyone works at, at the USPS because I cannot reach a live person. Well, we have the, the phone number right here. It's very quick, very easy uh, to access, and it's only a couple of clicks away. Um, in your uh, on the the, uh, the realized platform. All right, so I'm going to close the my service training tab. And get us back to uh, the real life platform. And again, if I click on that question mark, it's the second option, which is program training that takes me to um, uh, my service training .com. The technical support link and the curriculum uh, specialist link, these uh, essentially take me to, you know, the same kind of place where I can get access to uh, the customer care um, uh, phone number and, and so forth and different, you know, uh, links. So I'll get, let you guys explore that um, sometime, uh, you know, if you need to, but really it's the first two tabs that are the most important. All right. So, Joe, I'm going to pause there for a second and see if anyone has any questions about the first two icons we've looked at, the, the silhouette, which is, you know, settings and how to sign out, and then also the, the help features, the program training features under the question mark. Uh, Joe, are there any questions or does any, anyone want to, to jump in and ask anything? So um, there was a question. Uh, one of our teachers, we got lost a little bit, um, but you're showing it now. So it's those two settings at the top, the silhouette or the question mark. Uh, does anybody have anything? You can use the raise hand feature too. We can jump you in if you have a question right now. I think Veronica took care of the other question about um, we are going to try to get you guys into your accounts at the end of this training when Carlton finishes. Thank anything? You, I don't see any hands going up, so I think let's carry on. Okay. The, uh, the next icon, the bell, this is, um, you know, if there are any kind of notifications, you'll get those notifications here. And that will be a, a number, a one, two, three, whatever, if, if there are notifications um, underneath the bell. And uh, the magnifying glass, this is a search tool. And I'll take a couple of seconds to look at this. So click search. And we're going to search for content. And it may be, oh, quadratics that I want to look for. So I search that term quadratic under the magnifying glass, and it's going to pull up everything in the realized platform that uh, addresses quadratic equations. Now, not only will it pull up, you know, quadratics in Algebra 1, if I'm in an Algebra 1 class, but it's also going to pull up quadratics in Algebra 2 as well. And um, I can filter the, the content by looking here on the left hand side, you know, and, and maybe choose some filter criteria. Um, if I see something I like, great. I can, you know, assign, you know, some of those things. If, for instance, you see the assign button here. Uh, or if I just want to reference it, you know, for my, my own benefit or uh, have it help me in, in, in lesson planning, that's what the search feature is all about. Now, Near the top of the page, under the big green bar, you see this black uh, link here that says, see results from OpenEd. 
So remember, I searched for the term quadratics, and maybe there's nothing here that I, I you know, want to use right now, or, or maybe I want to see what's out there on the web. Well, I can click this, this link, this open ed link, and this takes me to an external website called open ed, and open ed is an organization that will take teachers submitted resources, make sure they are standards aligned, and then also scrub away ads and inappropriate content. So, so you could think of it as kind of like Google for teachers. Uh, it makes sure that it's, it's aligned to the standards and it scrubs away ads and inappropriate content. So we can see we have a thousand results. That's the max number it shows. It, what this means really is that there's over a thousand different results. But you can filter by type over here again if you really want to drill down into to something. But notice that you have all kinds of options here. There are Khan, Khan Academy videos, um, there are games that you can access, um, uh, tons of, of different resources that we can uh, take a look at. And if there is something that I like, notice there's that assign button again. And, and I'll show you how to create assignments in a second. But I just wanted you to know that if there's something offline that you're interested in, we want to make sure you, you can give that to your students. So you're, we know there's lots of good content online. So you can, you know, this is one of the ways that you can access that content online and be confident that it's standards based and that, uh, you know, there are no annoying ads and things like that associated with it. All right. So that is the magnifying glass. And then the last thing I'm going to show you before we switch back to the main page from the magnifying glass, we're going to go over to my library. If you click on my library. I'm not sure what your library is going to look like. Um, when you get when you first get your account, your library is going to be blank. Because your library, this is where all of the the tests, quizzes, documents that you've uploaded, any kind of personalization, anything that you have done to uh, you know any creation process and so forth, those are all going to be stored right here in my library. Now, what's nice about this? is that if I create a customized test uh, this year for my Algebra 1 students, it's going to be stored in my library so that next year, when I come back to school, uh, that same test is going to be right there in, the, in my library. And so, you know, I can find that. For instance, if I want to look at this benchmark test, I'll click the three dots, and I can assign that to my students again. So I can do the, the work one time, it's saved right here. I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, where did I save it? Where did it go? Uh, did I change computers? Oh, I've left it on the other computer on the hard drive. I lost work. Nope. Everything's going to be saved right here in your library. Now that includes your own personal files. Notice over here in the create content uh, area, you can actually upload a file. And um, I don't know that there is a, a limit to the number of files that you can upload, but I know that, that a lot of you have your favorite uh, you know, study guides or note-taking uh, guides, you know, whatever. You can upload those, and again, they'll be stored right here, and you can very quickly and easily assign those documents, everything, to your students by clicking the three buttons, and uh, they'll, they'll get all the content. There's a new feature that we're very excited about. If you'll notice near the top of the page above the search bar, default view is my content. But when I click shared with me, this is one of our most uh, requested upgrades. And, and uh, this is hot off the presses. It only happened within the past few weeks. And what this does, anyone who has um, uh, administrator access to the program, so Joe, Veronica, uh, uh, hopefully, you're the math ambassadors that work at, at your individual schools. They can create an assessment or an assignment and then push that assignment out to all teachers. Then the teachers can grab that assignment and assign it to their students, you know, according to whatever, you know, instructions or ag agreement that you guys have. So this is something we're very excited about that, um, you know, if there are district-wide benchmarks or, or, you know, just uh, a, a chance for you guys to uh, to work together and share assignments. This is one of the ways that you can do that. So I'm going to switch back 
to my content. And then the last thing I'm gonna cover here in this case is notice on the left-hand side, uh, when we were looking at the, the create content, there is this build a test option. And this is something that later on, I suggest you, uh, you know, spend some time playing with, but yes, you can create your own test by clicking build a test. And uh, this will take you through the, the, the test or quiz creation process. Now we're gonna get into uh, the, the different assignment types and advantages of and disadvantages of each of those a little bit later. So I'm not gonna get into how to build the test right now, but I just wanted to make sure you see this is one of the locations that you can go to build a test. Hey, Carlton, if I can interrupt you right now, we had a couple of questions yeah. come up. Um, yep. Is there a way to create folders to organize items in the My Library? So right now the answer is no, but that's another request that, that we've had is, you know, can we create folders? Um, uh, so, uh, you know, get some sort of organization. So right now the answer is no. Um, and, and the closest thing to that would be the refine by here. So, right. you know, all your documents that you've uploaded would be, you know, here and, and, and so on. And then the second question that came in is, uh, this teacher understands that administrators can share, um, but can teachers share resources from their library with other teachers? Uh, the answer to that is not yet. That's another request that, that we've had. And so we're, we're building in the sharing um, capability over time and in stages. So right now it's only someone with administrator access that, that can share. Thank you. Yep, you bet. Any other questions? Any questions about the, the magnifying glass, the search feature, or my library? Any, anything else? If not, then we're going to jump back to the main uh, home page. And it's very easy to get home on the Real Life platform by clicking over here on the, the upper left. You see Savas Real Life. If you click that button, that takes you home right there. Now, um, the, as I mentioned before, the Real Life platform is very sophisticated, has tons of different resources. If you ever get lost, you can know, all go home by clicking the Realize button in the top left corner. All right. So let's see what content is in our personal teacher's library. Let's jump in there. I'm going to do that by clicking the Browse button. And my library is going to look different from yours. Uh, my um, curriculum library is going to, going to look different from yours. Um, you guys are going to have all kinds of, of, of different things listed there, but um, you should have right at the top of the page, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry. And notice that the, uh, the stars are, are, um, uh, are yellow um, and um, you can basically select favorites and then, you know, arrange by favorites so that they pop up, you know, right at the top of the page there. Now, you guys will, only, once you have your own account, you'll only have the, the math content there, so it's not that big a deal. But I know that the demo account has lots of other curriculum on there. And so, you know, if things get messier, they get lost. You can very quickly select favorites on a demo account and then arrange them that way. All right. So we're going to jump into Algebra 1. I'll go over here to Algebra 1 and click on Algebra 1. And right now we are looking at the main table of contents for the Algebra 1 curriculum. And, and this is where um, I want to bring your attention to um, some of the documents that Joe sent you guys this morning, and, and they may be documents that you might want to take notes on because it does help explain the organization of the program. Um, I sent you guys some PDFs, and those PDF documents look like these that you see here. If uh, you want to access them, great. Um, if you want to print them out and write on them, you can. But I also made these writable documents. So you can, you know, take your notes on here digitally if you don't have time to print them out or if you don't want to you know, use any paper, you can, uh, you know, print uh, or, or um, you know, write in here if you want any kind of notes that, that uh, you want to take, all right? So this document, the one that says program level at the top of the page, 
This shows you the three levels of the program. So right now, you know, I, I see my documents. I'm gonna start off at the program level. And when I look at the Real Life platform, and I, when I first click on a title, I'm right here at the program level. The program level includes the table of contents. So that's why, uh, you know, on this document, program level and in parentheses, TOC, table of contents level, same thing. Now, when you look at this table of contents on the real life platform and compare it to the table of contents in the teacher's edition, it's exactly the same. Same order, um, you know, same topics, everything else. Uh, and, and that way it makes it very easy to switch between the textbook and the, the, the real life platform. And, and it's also that way with your students uh, as well. So this is the table of contents. We can scroll all the way down and you can see there are lots of different resources that you can access. Now, on the right hand side, we have some additional links here too. And if we had time uh, in this training on this document here, I would actually have you guys write teacher resources in the features um, in the feature section. And then I would have you go through this page, this table of contents or program level page and identify anything that you see that could be used as a, as a teacher resource. Now, hopefully you notice that, uh, you know, when we were at the top of the page here, on the right hand side, this fourth um, uh, item is teacher resources. So I click on that and note that I have underneath this, this drop down, four different teacher resources. There's uh, um, Texas Instruments calculator files, selected answers. Uh, it's the document at the very bottom that I want to draw your attention to. Now, teachers, you have a copy of this document, a hard copy. Came with your textbook. It's a, a thin, uh, a spiral bound, wire bound um, booklet. And it's called the Teacher's Edition Program Overview. This is the PDF copy of that Teacher's Edition Program Overview. So, if you can, uh, you know, um, access that, that teacher's edition program overview right now, great. If, if not, then, you know, this is the, the PDF version of that. We're not going to spend any time on, on this, this document right now, uh, simply for the sake of time. But this is, these are your instructions, basically, for the curriculum. And uh, my mom always told me, you know, when all else fails, read the instructions. Um, I don't always listen to, the, to, to, to that axiom, but, but uh, Lord knows I should. Um, this is where I, I suggest you start when you are trying to learn how to use the curriculum. This goes over the four-step lesson plan. It talks about how the math practices are woven in throughout uh, the curriculum. It talks about the different depth of knowledge levels, uh, three-act math, and so on and so on. So uh, and it's, it's actually a pretty quick read. So this really is a, a golden resource right here, that Teacher's Edition Program Overview. So these are some of the teacher resources that we can find on the table of contents level. But hopefully you also notice as we're going through these different components here in our list, that sometimes individual components will also have teacher resources. So for instance, in this case, this benchmark test has a link called teacher resources. If I click on that link, these are the teacher resources associated with that component. So this, this benchmark test that we were looking at is a digital test. And again, we'll get into the, the types of assessments in detail here, here in a couple of minutes. But this digital um, uh, resource underneath teacher resources has um, a printable version, a PDF version, or an editable version. So if for some reason, uh, you know, your students can't take this test online, and I know that uh, a lot of kids who have accommodations, they need a, a, a print version uh, of a particular test. This is how you can access two different versions of that printable uh, test. 
And uh, here's an item analysis chart and an answer key for that particular um, uh, benchmark as well. So make sure, folks, when you are going through, you know, um, each level of the program and looking for teacher resources, uh, you know, look in the side column here where it says teacher resources, and then also, uh, you know, look for the fine print. Make sure you identify where teacher resources live and the individual components too. So that is the table of contents level and some of the teacher resources that you'll find there. Let's go into a lesson now. So I'm gonna go, just choose some um, lesson at random. I'm just gonna jump into uh, topic seven. And um, topics are like chapters. So, um, um, and, and the reason we call it topics is because the common core standards refer to topics rather than, than chapters. And so we switched our language uh, to match the same. So let's jump into topic seven. I'm gonna click on that topic in algebra one. And now I'm at the topic level. The topic name, polynomials and factoring. And I'm gonna switch back to my organization document. And I right now I'm at the, the middle level of the program. That's the topic level. So. Since the features that we're looking for are teacher resources, I'll go back to the topic level here. And again, have you guys look for the teacher resources that you see at the topic level. We have on the right-hand side here, this drop-down menu for teacher resources. If I click on it this time, notice that those teacher resources are different at the topic level than they were at the table of contents level. So this is one of the places, one of the first places we're going to see that teacher resources are contextual based on where you are in the program. So at the topic level, under this drop-down menu, you have lots of common core uh, practice questions, basically. Also, as we go through the uh, you know, individual components, you'll notice that there are teacher resources uh, under many of the components here as well. So make sure you look for all those teacher resources at the topic level too. And then finally, the deepest level of the program is the lesson level. And to access a lesson, I simply you know, choose a lesson. I'll go into lesson 7-4 here. And now I'm at the deepest level of the platform, which is the lesson level. So if I'm looking for teacher resources here, I go to the right side, I can click that drop down menu, and I can see, uh, you know, at the lesson level, my teacher resources have changed again. I have a lesson plan, an editable, editable version of a lesson plan, as well as a PDF version. And then teacher resources that belong to individual components here in the main list. And then there are other things here that you may, um, you know, call teacher resources uh, uh, too. All right. So I'm, I'm going to pause for questions in, in just a second, but I'm, I want to uh, reiterate that to navigate. Uh, from the table of contents level, the program level, and, and by the way, let's, let's jump back up to the table of contents, the highest level of the program. And to do that at the top of the page above the thin black line, I can click on table of contents. That takes me to the highest level of the program. Here we are with the, the main table of contents that you would find at the beginning of your teacher's edition or student edition. Then I jump into the topic level by clicking a topic. That's the middle level of the program. And then finally, jump into a lesson, the deepest level of the program by, by clicking on the lesson. And here we are, the deepest level of the program. If I want to jump immediately back to table of contents, we did that already. We just click on table of contents. Otherwise, if I want to jump up one level, it's the green arrow I want to use right here. So from the lesson level, I can jump up to the topic level, do my work. And from the topic level, I can jump back up to 
the table of contents level. All right, so um, are there any questions about how to navigate these three levels of the program, the program level, the topic level, and the lesson level? Uh, Joe, does anybody have any questions out there? Right now, Carlton, there aren't any questions. If anybody has something you want to just ask real quick, you can put a hand up. I'll get to you right now. If there isn't anything, uh, Carlton, uh, I, I say you go ahead and continue. And I don't see a All hand right. go up, so let's do it. All right, cool. So here we are back at the table of contents level, uh, the, the, the program level. And um, uh, we've talked about how to navigate between, you know, um, the entire title, the entire curriculum, the, 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 the whole program. We've talked about how we can navigate at the uh, topic level. And then finally talk about how we can navigate at the lesson level and then back up from lesson to topic to table of contents. Um, at the top of the page here, there are some other very important resources I want to bring your attention to. So first of all, let's let's look over here above the thin black line uh, at tools. So I'm going to click on tools. And, and these are some, some tools and some downloads, some links that you are definitely going to want to, um, uh, to know about, all right? So uh, math tools, this is a, a, a nice, um, uh, you know, one thing that you can use, and I'll just go ahead and click on it. But this is something you use in your class um, uh, that, uh, you know, for demonstrations online, if you, you know, we have a, a 2D geometric const uh, constructor, you can actually do transformations and constructions and things like that on here. I won't take the time to, to do that right now, but you can play with that um, uh, later. And remember how I said that many items, if we click on them, open in a separate tab, well, that's what happened here. When I clicked on tools, uh, it just opened in a separate tab in my browser. So I'm gonna close that tab and go back to uh, the main page here. Click on tools again, the glossary, it's obvious what that means. Desmos graphing calculator, you most likely know what Desmos is all about. This is just a quick link to access Desmos. And so they have all three of their calculators. Uh, we have all three of them linked here. And then this is the next important link that I want you to notice, answers and solutions. So if you click on answers and solutions, this is going to bring you to a page that, that will prompt you to download answers and solutions software for the three different titles that you have. And um, uh, Joe, I believe you guys have this whitelisted um, uh, with your district and teachers are able to install this on their machines or, or uh, have they been, has it been pushed out already? Uh, Joe, maybe you can jump in and let me know. You know, um, I know, when we piloted, we needed to go uh, have that done. We'll, we'll look into how we can make sure teachers are going to have that. We'll check with our tech. OK, gotcha. Cool. Thanks uh, for clarifying that. Now, th the reason I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up, so obviously you're not wanting, you, you probably don't want to go through the, the entire textbook and you know uh, come up with all of the solutions and all the answers to all the problems in there. So that's what this, this software package is all about. Now. The irony of me asking Joe about whether or not your district has whitelisted this and you're able to install it on your computer is not lost to me because I just got a new computer from my company and my company has locked me down and I cannot install this package on my computer. Uh, otherwise, I would show you what it looks like. But since I can't show you, I'm gonna to try to describe uh, what it does uh, so you get an idea. The answers and solutions software, um, that gives you answers and solutions to anything that's in the textbook. And so I, I'm emphasizing that because we really have two different, you know, massive sophisticated tools that we can work with. One is the textbook and one is the real life platform. If you're looking for answers and solutions to anything in the textbook, you're gonna to have to access it through this software package that you install on your computer. One of the things that's nice about this software package is that you can create, um, well, first of all, you can toggle between the solution, uh, I mean, the answer just shows that, you know, the final answer or solution, it'll show you the worked out solution to a problem. You can choose a set of problems to, um, you know, to look at, you know, I wanna see the solutions to problems one, two, three, 18, 21, 
36 through 42 even. You can select like that. You can print those solutions. You can save them. So it's, it's, it's very um, um, uh, flexible and, and very powerful that you can, you know, print those solutions out or, or create those solution sets and then give them to, give them to your students. So that's, that's what this software package does. And again, it's only for the problems um, in the textbook. All right. So I'm going to close this tab for now. And having said that, talking about answers and solutions for the software, I mean, for the, uh, for the textbook, answers and solutions for anything on the real life platform are going to be in a different location. We looked at that briefly earlier. Answers and solutions for anything on the real life platform are going to live right here in teacher resources. So for instance, this benchmark test, if I want to see what the solutions are for the benchmark test, I need to click on teacher resources. And this is where my solution set is going to be. So if it's on realize, look for the answer key, the solutions under teacher resources. If it's in the textbook, look for the solutions in that software package. Joe, any questions about that? No, I don't see anything that's come up over that. Okay, cool. So back up to tools then. We've uh, downloaded the answers and solutions. And uh, uh, the uh, final uh, uh, couple of links here, I want to point out part of the, or, or the adoption also includes, uh, the adoption of the curriculum includes access to our exam view uh, worksheet generator. And so this is how you can download exam view. And, and again, this is something that, that uh, Joe and Veronica will have to work with the tech team, make sure that you guys have access to that. But uh, if any of you have used exam view in the past, um, um, it's a basic worksheet generator and it's similar to uh, CUDA software and um, infinite, no, not infinite. I can't remember the, the name of the other uh, worksheet generator, but it includes a, um, a, a library of questions. You can write your own questions. And, and really the exam view um, uh, software is, is that's ideal for making printable tests, customized print tests. That's what exam view is all about. And so that's included in, in the adoption. All right, so from there, from the tools drop down menu, we're gonna move over to e-text, click on e-text. And this is gonna bring up all of the versions of the textbook that you as teachers have access to. So we have our teacher's edition. And when you click on any of these, we'll click on teacher's edition first. When you click on this, it's gonna take you to this new window. And the reason it takes you to a new window is so that when you click it here, it will open the textbook in a new tab in your browser. Okay. So uh, it unzips it. Here we are with the teacher's edition. And let's talk about the e-text for just a second. So the teacher's edition um, e-text is exactly the same as the print edition. So if you want to leave your um, uh, if you want to leave your teacher's edition uh, a hard copy at uh, uh, at school, you can. If uh, and, and do all your planning digitally at home, this is how you access it. So here's the teacher's edition. In the top right corner, the menu button. Uh, I just heard recently this is called a hamburger. Who knew? But if you click the hamburger, the menu hamburger, then this will bring up um, you know a navigation pane with our table of contents. And I can click table of contents very easily. You know, find the topic we're working on, for instance, topic seven. And uh, then I'll scroll, scroll down and look for the lesson. And there we go, topic seven, lesson four. And it takes me to that part of the textbook. Um, and then I can navigate through here, you know, back and forth with the next and the back button. And the way the teacher's edition is designed, uh, the student view is on, um, the inside of of the, uh, the the textbook. So let me switch to two 
page view here. So we get a chance to see what that looks like. And um, okay, thank you. Um, so this is the uh, uh, the teacher's view. Uh, the the student edition or the view of the student edition is going to be on the right side here, and with the gray background. And that way you'll know what the the students see versus what you see in the uh, the teacher's edition. Um, you can let me close this out and go back into the main view here. You can take notes for yourself. So, for instance, if you double click on a, you know, a word or something, you can take a note to yourself. So, th this, anyway, th these are just some of the planning tools that you can use with with the textbook. All right. So that is the teacher's edition. The menu here is how you navigate. Any of those notes that you take will be stored here in the annotations and highlights section. We can bookmark pages to quickly, you know, jump from one section to another. And that way, uh, you know, it's just easy to find our way through the textbook, et cetera. So that is the teacher's edition. Now, when I click that teacher's edition link and, you know, I go to the teacher's edition and I work in it. Um, and again, we have this new tab in our browser for the teacher's edition. I click on, on the realized platform link again or, or tab and I see this page. Now, it, sometimes teachers will see this and freak out because they think, oh, well, what happened to Realize? What happened to all the, the content that's there? Look for the exit button. So this is your exit strategy right here. Um, you're not logged out. You simply have to click the exit to exit out of this page. So when we click that exit button, it takes us back onto the Realize platform. It's going to be the same thing with the, the student edition and the teacher's edition. Uh, uh, the, I'm sorry. It's going to be the same thing with the interactive student edition and the traditional student edition as well. And then notice also at the bottom of the page is the Spanish edition. Now, I want to spend a little bit of time on the student edition because this is important. The regular student edition. So if you would, please, ladies and gentlemen, uh, click the, the link that just says student edition, not interactive student edition, but student edition. The student edition, this is an exact replica of the student textbook. So again, we have to say open a new window. And the same kind of navigation pane will pop up. And they can navigate, uh, you know, same as you. We'll go here, table of contents, and, you know, find the topic and lesson. There's lesson four, topic seven, lesson four. And here we go with the student view um, of the student edition. The reason I wanted to show you this is because we, you know, California is, is an awesome state because it is such a di diverse state. And we have students that speak all kinds of, of languages. Now, uh, we do have Spanish resources designed specifically for um, the um, Algebra, Geometry, Algebra 2 um, textbooks in the Envision series. But Spanish isn't the only language that our students speak. So here's the deal. If you use Google Chrome as, as a browser and install Google Translate, then as, as an extension on Google Chrome, I can now use Google Translate to translate this page into over a hundred different languages. So this is the list of languages that I have access to. And I'm going to choose Chinese. And when I do notice that the translation occurs. And so now students or parents who, uh, you know, need um, access to to this content, you know, in, in their native language can can have that. So I see Veronica is is requesting control of the uh, the content here. Veronica, you want me to? No, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. Okay. Go ahead, Carlton. All right, just wanted wanted to double check there. All right, so and again, you can you know you you and your students will be able to translate this into over a hundred different languages. That you can go through here. And I've had about 
40 of these languages, which you see here, uh, confirmed by native speakers as being surprisingly good translations. Now, many of these translations are also supported by another uh, Google extension called Read Aloud. And uh, I'm not sure if Chinese is, is uh, supported. And I don't know if you'll be able to hear this or not. But if I click the Read Aloud extension, I'm not sure if you can hear that or not, but it is reading it. Um, so again, that is, you know, another feature uh, with, with the textbook here. So, you know, just think about how you can use this with, with your students. You know, obviously we have students who, who come in and, and they you know, have very limited uh, English acquisition and in particular with academic language. Uh, this would be ideal for them to help, help them out. But sometimes those students come in and they are pretty good with English and their academic, academic uh, English is, is pretty good. Uh, but this would be a great tool to show to their parents because, you know, a lot of parents really want to help their students and, and feel like they're involved in, in their uh, students' instruction. But because of, you know, their own language barriers, may, they may not be able to understand. Well, this would be ideal uh, to help pull our, our uh, parent community in. All right. Uh, Joe, I'll stop there and see if there are any questions about um, Google Translate or the teacher edition or, or student edition. So we were not able to uh, hear that, and it's probably just in how um, you being a guest presenter, it didn't allow that uh, to play on our end, so we didn't hear the audio. Um, mm -hmm. So we can we can take care of that and we can you know deal with that later. I, th I think the only question, unless somebody's going to raise a hand and ask where we are right now, uh, it may not be exactly where we are right now. Um, it may come more when you start talking about classes and students. Um, we have resource specialists and paraprofessionals who would like to know if they could be added into classes as students so they can see what is being assigned to the students. So that may not be for right now, but I want to make sure I don't forget that. Sure, sure, sure. And, and actually, uh, I will address that question because I know it's something that is super important um, for you guys to, to know that. And the answer to that, um, it, well, it's kind of complicated. And the reason I say that is because it's something that the district would have to do. Since you guys are uh, going to be uh, basically auto rostered, your students are automatically rostered into the program. It, the, um, the program is accessing your student database and your learning management system to create the course um, uh, roster. So um, if you as a resource specialist, uh, you know, aren't a student in, in the learning management system, for instance, then it's not going to know to to enroll you in, in that class. So that's something that um, uh, Joe, Veronica, maybe we can work with you guys in the district to see if we can have uh, teachers enrolled as students uh, or maybe even set up some, uh, you know, fake students uh, as part of the class. I figured that uh, so was that, more that, of an in, that's an internal question on our end. Yeah, 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 I think so. OK, thank you for clarifying that, Carlton. Yep, yep, no problem. All right, so that is uh, the student edition, the the traditional uh, student e-text. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then the last thing I want to show you, and we'll take a quick break. Um, remember to hit that exit button. The last thing I want to show you from the e-text page is the interactive student edition. And this is really where the power of the real life platform and the power of um, uh, you know, digital content is, is gonna make itself obvious. So I'll click the interactive student edition, open a new window. And now your students can access the entire you know, textbook, whether it's the traditional version, just the flat you know, version that they can translate or the interactive student edition and let's, We'll just jump in here to topic four. Um, and let's see. So now the the traditional textbook was just a, a flat, you know, kind of like a PDF copy. But the interactive edition has tons of links, hyperlinks, and, and that sort of thing in it. So, you know, from this page, I can click topic overview, and then I can very quickly navigate to, you know, particular sections. So here's lesson 4-1. And, uh, you know, here's the first page I would see what is the lesson essential question. I can review the standards if I want. Uh, lesson overview. 
So this is how, as a student, I can very quickly navigate through the e-text. And notice that I can actually write my response. And if I have, if I can spell, if I have assigned it, 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 me as a teacher, if I have assigned this to my students and they write their responses here, they can actually submit their responses and then I can review their work. So this is one of the, 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 the tools that's gonna be very convenient, very handy when it comes to in particular distance learning. If you want your students engaging in the textbook, then assign this section to them. They can write their responses here and uh, you know, then you can review their work if you want. Uh, by the way, this icon here, this is a calculator icon. So this is, uh, you know, uh, one tool that's handy that the students will be able to access. All right. Now, I click the next button. And uh, this is another place that highlights uh, the interactive um, uh, nature of th this particular version of the, the student edition. If I click on study tip, these are some things that I can work on. Um, if I click solution, it will show me step by step what the solution is and what to do. If I click the, the button, it shows the solution. If I click this, this drop down, it will tell me what to do. Then step two, then I can click that and so forth. Um, this example, has three different parts. That's what the three dots at the top of the page are. So as a student, I would click the next dot, go to the next page here. And this is one of the places where you can see that Desmos is actually embedded into our program. So this is a live Desmos graph right here. So now, as a student, I can go here and say, well, what does this graph look like? Well, let me graph it and see why equals one half X minus two. So there's that graph or there's uh, that line. Then Y equals three X minus seven. There's that graph. I'll close that. And then let me see if I can zoom in and figure out what that solution point is. There it is. Hey, well, you know, two, negative one. Let me check my answer. Yep, I got it right. So Desmos is built into the program throughout all of the, the, the topics that you're going to see in strategic locations. Now, not every lesson lends itself to, you know, Desmos Interactive Graphing Calculator, but you're going to find um, hundreds of different places within the, the curriculum where Desmos is embedded. So this is just one of the tools that your students can use uh, to, um, uh, you know, as they're learning the content. And then finally, we go to this last dot here, and this is called a try it. And the try it is basically your chance for formative assessment. And when we look at uh, the lesson structure itself, We'll talk about how this try it comes to be, uh, in particular with that student companion that I mentioned earlier. So this is the try it. Again, this one happens to be a Desmos interactivity. Um, and, uh, you know, if I'm good with that, then I'm going to click the next button. And basically, this will take me through the lesson page by page. Uh, as a student, I can do all the work. Like I said before, if I have assigned this as a teacher, if I, if I have assigned this to my students ahead of time, then I can review their work to see if they're, you know, on task and I can, you know, go, go into detail as much as I want with it or, or, you know, however you see fit. Okay, so from the student edition back to realize, I'll click the exit button and that covers the, um, the textbooks, the different types of textbooks. I'm just going to quickly standards, self-explanatory. You can actually drill down into the Common Core State Standards. That's above the thin black line here on, on Realize. And um, if I need to target a particular standard with my students, I keep drilling down by hitting that, that arrow, the green arrow, until I find the standard. 
And when I find that standard, it's going to bring up all of the resources inside Realize that I can assign to my students that address that standard. So this is one, one of the ways that you can remediate, you know, if a student is struggling with a particular standard, as indicated by their benchmark test, you can very quickly find resources to, you know, help remediate that standard. And then finally, resources above the thin, thin black line. Here we go with resources. Um, this is where you can search again for resource type, and then it will bring you, um, you know, for instance, if I want to find a quiz, I can type in the word quiz and all my quizzes will pop up. If I want to find uh, projects, see, I think projects are in here. Yeah, they're all my projects. So that's what the resource button is all about. And then from resource, I'll go to the table of contents. And we're back where we began. So this, this first part of our session has been kind of a, um, a high level overview on how to use the tools that are inside the Realize platform. The next part, what we're going to get into is how to use it for planning lessons and create content for your students and, and, and assignments. But I just want to pause there for a second and see if you guys um, have any questions about how to navigate Realize and use the tools. I just want to check for understanding and, and uh, see if there's anything that you guys um, have up to this point. OK, uh, here's a couple of questions for you, uh, Carlton. Um, the first one is uh, so you know some of the special ed students come in at you know, like a third grade level um, they're not going to be able to start in algebra so is how would you recommend you know access to some of that math that may be below algebra that those teachers would need so um, the the content, obviously, this is an Algebra 1 uh, textbook and Algebra 1 uh, with Algebra 1 content. Now, one of the things, uh, one of the tools that we have here in the program is called Newton. And uh, so if I jump into a topic, for instance, and then jump into a lesson, I can see down near the bottom in the... Uh, third step of my four step lesson plan is something called adaptive, adaptive practice powered by Newton. So, so what this does, this, this is, um, um, Newton is a company that creates adaptive um, learning solutions based on artificial intelligence and all kinds of different metrics. So this is um, one of the places that you can go to uh, give assignments to your students. And essentially what it does is any digital, um, uh, resource or, or any digital assessment your student has taken gives Newton data on, you know, where your student's gaps are, what they need to work on, uh, what they need to learn, and helps serve up learning opportunities for those students. So Newton is one of the places that you can go. Now, the thing is, Newton will only go down, I, I think, to grade level. So that's something to, to uh, just want to make sure that you're clear on and, and something to keep in mind. Another place that you can go for resources is, um, you know, once we go back up to the, the uh, magnifying glass at the top of the page, click on the search tool, and maybe we need, you know, help with fractions or integers or counting numbers, whatever, then I can search for that. If I don't see anything inside the, uh, the realized table of contents here, then go to open it. So you can go to uh, this additional website here uh, and find information and, and resources from OpenEd that you can give to your students uh, as well. Now, currently, um, your uh, middle school teachers are, are going to be piloting our um, uh, seventh grade advanced math course. Um, and um, the, the reason I say that is if Modesto does choose to adopt the seventh grade math and then, you know, perhaps eventually the, the middle school math, then potentially you as algebra, geometry, algebra two teachers will also have access to all of the curriculum at the middle school level. So even though you're teaching a kid in algebra one, you could still reach down into sixth grade math, for instance, and pull resources to give to your students uh, that way, too. So that's kind of a long-winded 
answer, but but um, uh, hopefully that will you know give you some ideas of, of some of the resources that that you have here. Thanks, Carlton. There's another question that came up. Uh, it says, "Does assign mean only that topic is what the students will see, or do they see every topic and lesson at the beginning of the year?" Ah, that is a very good question, and actually is a perfect segue into our next section of, of the, uh, the presentation. So I'm going to hold off on that. See if there are any other questions because we're going to jump into that next. I, I think that's the only question for you. So if we want to do a quick break, now's a good time. OK, let's do that. We'll take five and uh, then we'll come back in just a couple of minutes. Let me see here. I'll pull up my timer and uh, let's go, shall we? There we go. Five minutes.
All right, and we're back. So, um, all right, so here we are, we're back. And the, uh, the question was um, about assignments, what students see, uh, you know, versus what, what teachers see and, and so forth. Now, the nice thing about assignments is that you can assign things all the way down to the granular level. So you could give a student just a single item, like an example, you know, as an assignment. Um, but I, I just want to go over a little bit in detail. What can teachers see versus what can students see? So on your screen, um, uh, you should see two columns. One says teacher, teacher account, the other says student account. Now, teachers, this is what we were playing with, this view right here. Uh, teachers have access to obviously absolutely everything included in the, the real life platform, the e-text, all the interactivities, and so forth. Students, their view when it comes to, um, you know, browse and they click on Algebra 1, this is the student view versus the teacher view. So you can see here that it looks like we are really cheating the students and limiting the students in terms of what they can and, and, and can't see. Uh, and obviously, if we, you know, compare that, uh, there are tons of resources in the teacher account. Um, this is both of these are from the same lesson within the um, um, the textbook, and uh, so the teachers have tons of different resources that that the students don't have. Well, so here here's the truth of the matter: your students. Oh, and by the way, your if there are two icons that are important, there's a padlock that means that your students can never see it, no matter what, and for obvious reasons. The other icon you want to be familiar with is this guy right here, the guy chopped in half. That is a re if, if, if you see that icon, uh, that means that your students will not see it unless you assign it. So when you compare these two pages, you can see that, you know, for instance, uh, students won't automatically see in their realized feed on the realized platform here, they won't automatically see example one. All right. Now, here's the cool part about it, though. That doesn't mean students don't have access to that content. What students will do is they will access that content by opening their interactive student edition. So even though, you know, uh, if a student logs into Realize and they, and they look at their account, that's all they see. That doesn't mean they can't access example, you know, one from from topic four, lesson one. That lives in the interactive student edition. So the way I like to think about it is, um, you know, it, it's like a, um, the, the platform is kind of like a student's desk at home. All right. So here they are. The kids are, you know, logging into their computer. You can see on the shelf behind them there. That's where the Envision textbook is. Now, that textbook lives there passively, and, and uh, so, you know, whether a student accesses it or not, it's up to them. Um, but basically, a student can access that textbook anytime. It's just like any traditional textbook. And that means that online, they can access that textbook anytime, and they can play with the Desmos interactivities. They can do the examples. They can watch the virtual nerd videos on their own, or... You as a teacher, if you want to make sure they get that assignment, you can basically um, assign to your students an entire lesson or individual components of that lesson. You can uh, uh, give them assignments like Math Excel and, and uh, quizzes and, and things like that. And that's like you are laying that piece of paper on the student's desk and saying, do this now. Except instead of being a piece of paper, it happens to be a digital assignment that shows up on their assignment list uh, when they log into their account. So it's important to know the differences between the, the, the two views, the teacher view versus the, the student view. By default, the students will access all of the uh, interactivities and everything else through the interactive student edition. However, if you want to make sure a student sees something, you can assign it the students will do that assignment, and then you will get data in return on that particular assignment. 
So I'm going to switch back to my uh, Realize account here and show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go into an account uh, or into my Algebra 1 content. And here we were in uh, Chapter 7 or Topic 7, polynomial and factoring. And we are working on uh, lesson number four, factoring polynomials. So here we are at the lesson level. Um, you know, I like this interactivity right here, the model and discuss interactivity. Um, as a teacher, I have previewed it simply by clicking on the icon. And, okay, here we go, and it will open. And here is the model and discuss. This is the first step of my four step lesson plan, by the way, model and discuss. And um, I noticed that this is actually interactive. So, you know, here we are, we're making a bento box and we have some requirements. And this is, you know, helping us understand completing the square basically and, and uh, you know, how to factor polynomials. And we have some criteria, equal numbers of sections for entrees and side dishes. So I'm gonna drag and drop these squares in place. You know, there's uh, equal numbers, so two there, two there. Um, and so I've just, you know, done part A for uh, this first part, and then more sections for entrees and sides. Okay, let's do this and this and this. So you get the idea. So maybe I want students to do this on their own at home, and I want to get data. I want to see how they did. Well, then. Um, I can assign this to the students. I'll click the exit button here, by the way, to go back onto the assignment list or onto the, um, the lesson level and all the components. I can assign just this piece of the lesson to my students if I want to. So you see the assign button here. If I click assign, I get this dialog box that pops up. And this is something that's, that's really handy especially for our resource uh, students, uh, whether it be our gate kids or our uh, special ed kids, 504, whatever, because now I can actually choose individual components within a lesson and give it to either my entire class, to groups, or to individual students. So here's the title of the um, you know, component I'm gonna assign to my students here. And I can edit that title if I want. I'll choose a start date is today. The due date will be on Friday. I can leave some notes here if I want. Notice that I can adjust the start and end times too. And now over here, when it comes to um, who, who am I gonna assign this to? Well, I can start typing in a class. So period one, algebra one pops up, I select it, I can assign it to a group. I have my IEP group. So here's my IEP 504 group, or I can uh, assign it to an individual student, Harry Potter. So creating the assignment, pushing out a component is as easy as identifying the constituents to whom you want to give that assignment and then just typing in their their name you know first few, first few letters of the name and then when it shows up in the list you just select it and once you have everyone you want then you can click the assign button and then that component is assigned to uh, those people notice how it turns green little check mark there and so now when students log into their um, account, you know, this is a, what the student account looks like uh, when they log in, in their assignment list, they're gonna see that component I just assigned to them, the lesson 7-4. And so they can click on it, they can work on it, and then they would get data. All right, me as a teacher, I'll get data and feedback on, on their work. Now, Students can also access that same feature from their e-text, though, from the Interactive Student Edition, and they can play with it on their own. So they already have access to it through the Interactive Student Edition. It's just that if you want to get data from it and if you want to make sure it lands on their desktop and they know how to uh, and you want them to do it, then you're going to have to assign it to them from this component here uh, from this list. So 
you can assign individual examples, um, individual, you know, uh, whether it comes to problems that you're going to work on, quizzes, et cetera, or you can assign, let's go back, I want to select all, I can assign the entire lesson to them. That's a lot. Uh, and it's a lot of things for them, you know, to show up on their on their uh, assignment list. So I suggest, you know, you choose exactly what it is that you want your students to to receive as part of their assignment. So that's the basics of creating an assignment there. Any, any Joe, are there any questions about just how to create an assignment and what students see versus what they uh, uh, teachers want them to see? Nothing's come up, Carlton. OK. All right, so now let's let's talk about this four step lesson plan that we mentioned earlier and and briefly I'll just show you this uh, uh, document you may want to refer to this and I think that if you follow this document um, it'll do a pretty good job of explaining you know the four steps explore understand apply practice and problem solving and finally um, assessment differentiation. So uh, if you want to take notes on this or even use this as a as a, um, a lesson planner to, to help you out, you know, uh, by all means do that. But we can see the four step lesson structure within this this lesson itself. So there's the first step, explore, second step, understand and apply, third step, practice and problem solving, and then finally we get to assess and differentiate. So we can go through an entire lesson with our students. And maybe I choose to, you know, uh, just as I am demonstrating these components to you online virtually, I can do the same thing with my students. I can control the drag and drop and, you know, I can have a discussion with my students as we're going through this. Um, I'll go to the next part by, and, and by the way, this is the teacher view. I have a drop down menu at the top, and now I can just very quickly go to the next part of that lesson. So again, if I am, you know, synchronously instructing my students and I have a whole you know panel of students on Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever. Um, this, is, this is how I can quickly navigate through that lesson. All right. And by the way, I want you to notice that there's lots of white space on these pages. Uh, the reason for that is so that you can write your own notes here and show your own show students, you know, your own solutions if, if, if you want. Otherwise, you cl click solution, then it will show, you know, the the solution in, in the textbook and so forth. So this is how you as a teacher can navigate and present the lesson to your students if you want to. All right. So this is presentation view. I'm going to exit out of presentation view. The way I got into presentation view is I just clicked whatever component I wanted to start at. So maybe, you know, the first day we go through example one and two. The next day I, I want to start off with example three, then I'll just click example three and there we are back in example three and we can start our lesson and presentation from there. All right, so we go through the second step, which is understand and apply. And then we get to the third step, which is practice and problem solving. And this is one of the places that you can do some really cool stuff. And this will refer to the, the third, um, uh, we'll refer to the third piece of paper that, that um, uh, we sent you, the third document, and that is the assessment and assignment options document. So there are many different assessments and assignments available. We're going to talk about mostly for this session, just for lack of uh, because of the time, we're mostly going to talk about the uh, assessment types one, two, and three, and we'll talk a little bit about seven, eight, and nine. So we can see here within the practice and problem solving, we have a math Excel assignment. Within assess and differentiate, we have uh, what I call a red dot assignment or red dot assessment. So from this um, list here, let's start off with the red dot assessments and talk about when you would use one versus the other. Actually, I take it back. Let's start off with Math Excel. My apologies. We'll, we'll go in order of the lesson here. All right. Let's start with Math Excel. So at the end of the lesson, I have this assignment called practice and problem solving. Uh, for my students. It is a Math Excel assignment. And let me show you what Math Excel looks like. I'll click the assignment here and I'll start. And by the way, I would have to assign this to my students. Currently, there are 26 questions in this assignment. That's too much for your students, most likely. 
All right, and, and we'll talk about how you can change that. So your students um, from here have access to a variety of, 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 of help features and, and, and things like that. Now, I'm gonna compare this to, um, and I'm trying to get rid of, there's a navigation pane right where I want to click and I can't get rid of that navigation pane. Um, let's see if I can weasel my way through here. Size reader. I think this is all right. So I want to compare this this math Excel assignment to the problem set that exists in uh, lesson seven. All right. So the problems at the end of the each lesson, just like every traditional you know textbook out there, you have a list of problems that you can choose from. Um, here is the problem set right here. So as a student, this, these are what you know, my problem set will look like. Well, within Math Excel, these problems here, all 26 problems here, are the same exact 26 problems that I see here as a student. And when I say 26, it goes from 18 through, um, third, let's see, why does it go up to 18? through uh, 43, so 26 total. That doesn't mean one through 26, it just means 26 problems total. Now, look at the numbers here. The first problem I see is, is question 18 in my textbook. On Math Excel, notice how number 18 appears on the problem number. That's because that's the problem number that it corresponds to in the textbook. This way, ladies and gentlemen, you can assign um, homework that is the same homework as in the back of the book but it's an uh it's a math excel assignment now the first few set of problems within math excel are part of this understand section they are meant primarily as a discussion you know we come back together the next day let's talk about these problems so that means that your students for that first section so that um, understand section all of your students are going to receive the same problems. They look exactly the same for every single student. That way it's easy to talk about the solutions. It's easy to talk about common mistakes and things like that. All right. That's the first few problems. Now, once students get out of that um, understand section and into the practice session, problem number 26, this is the first one. Let me go back to realize and we'll go to problem 26 here. Uh, let's see, let's go next until we get to 26. So now we're in the, the practice session. Now every student in your class is going to have a different problem. Same problem type, same concept, but different numbers. This way, uh, you know, if Johnny and Susie are sitting next to each other, instead of Johnny saying, how did you do, or, you know, what did you get for number uh, 26? Johnny's going to have to say, how did you do number 26? It's a completely different discussion. So let's talk about some of the help features that are built in. Notice question help here. If I click question help, I can view an example. And so that brings up, you know, an example, uh, uh, the, a problem that's similar to the one I'm working on. And then I control the pace as a student. I control the pace through at which I work through the example. This one's pretty simple. So I had a couple of steps. If that works for me, great. I'll just go up here and, you know, uh, write an answer. I'll just write something ridiculous. Uh, nope, that's not correct. I get immediate feedback. Remember, this is practice, so I'm getting feedback. Hopefully, I'll read that feedback, click the OK button. I get a chance to change my answer. So I'll go back up here, and I'm going to write uh, X. Nope, I still don't have it right. Click OK. Now, notice in the bottom right-hand corner, it says final check. I get up to three opportunities to get this answer right. So hopefully, I'm accessing these question help features along the way. I can access the textbook very quickly. It will open right to the section this, this um, uh, question comes from. There's a video called Virtual Nerd. 
and virtual nerd videos, they are embedded in the program. Uh, these are opportunities for your students to, um, you know, watch these videos on their own. Um, and um, I don't think you can hear her speaking, but, the, you know, she's explaining how to factor out the greatest common uh, factor. Uh, these are great tools, not just for your students, but for your parents, too, because honestly, how many of our parents can help their kids with, with their math homework. Uh, and then the, the most uh, sophisticated um, help feature is the Help Me Solve This. We click on that. And this takes them through a step-by-step -step process on how to solve the same exact problem that we're working on here. Now, when students first see this, they're going to think, oh, man, that's, that's great because now I can just cheat the system and I'll have it solve the problem for me. But notice that uh, Help Me Solve This requires me to interact with the solution process. I have to read it. I actually have to do what it says. And even here, if I get something wrong, it's going to tell me, nope, you got that wrong. And I'll get a chance to correct it. And um, I'll go back uh, and let's see. Yep. All right, there we go. So, you know, I get feedback, I can close that, and your students are going to say, oh, great, I'll just use Help Me Solve This every single time. But notice, as soon as I click Help Me Solve This, it marks the problem wrong, but I get the opportunity to redo this same problem. Notice I have different numbers now. I can re redo the same problem for full credit. So even though it marked it wrong, I can still do this problem and get full credit for it, and I can do redo this problem as many times as I need to because these values are algorithmically generated. I still have access to all the help features. And this really is a powerful way for your students to genuinely get in there and practice, make mistakes. It's OK to make mistakes because you can access those help features. And every student can make 100% on every single assignment if they want to. Once they've submitted this assignment, they can reopen the assignment and redo the whole thing for full credit if they, if they want to. So, so this is one of the ways that you can, uh, you know, encourage students to improve their scores, basically, by redoing an assignment. So that's what a Math Excel assignment looks like. Math Excel is ideal for practice and problem solving, not necessarily for assessments. And the reason I say that is because, you know, it has these question help features built in. And so it would be easy for some students just to rely way too heavily on these question help features and and get the right answer rather than you know giving them you know showing genuine um, acumen with with the materials now for your special ed kids maybe this is an assessment for them because it has these tools built in then absolutely assign this as an assessment because they have these accommodations that they can rely on all right i'm going to exit out of this math excel assignment and joe are there any questions about math excel No, there's nothing about Math Excel. OK, so let me show you how to edit assignments. And this is going to work for Math Excel or these red dot assessments that we're going to look at in, in a couple of minutes. Remember how I said that 26 problems is, is, is probably too much to give to your students? Well, how do I know what to give to my students? Well, let me show you. So in the teacher's edition, whether it's the print or the hard copy, I mean the, uh, uh, the print or the digital copy, uh, in the teacher's edition, uh, you know, we have lots of teacher information that we can go through. And, and by the way, you know, make sure you're looking in the, the bottom margins. You're going to find uh, uh, RTI tips. You're going to find uh, additional examples and help for your EL kids uh, and so forth. But when you get to the practice and problem solving part of the lesson, let's pull that up. In the teacher's edition, there's this handy assignment guide and item analysis. So for students who are, you know, just at level, here's the basic assignment guide for them. These are the questions that, that it suggests you assign to them. If you have advanced kids, these are the questions. And so obviously all your, your students won't be doing all 26 problems here if you use this assignment guide. You can use this item analysis chart to kind of, you know, drill down into exactly, you know, the level of, of, uh, of uh, engagement that your students will have to have, um, uh, you know, to do the assignment. But 
I can use this assignment guide with, with this textbook open next to my computer and looking at this assignment guide, I can go to Math Excel and I'm going to click on Customize. And this will work for, well, it's not working at all right now. What's going on? Uh, this will work for um, red dot assessments or, here we go. Huh. I don't know what happened there, guys. I apologize for that. The system decided to boot me out for some reason. But I'm going to go back to uh, Topic 7, Lesson 4. My internet flashed. Okay. I click the Customize button. Hmm. All right. This is it. And now I can preview the questions that I have by clicking on the question. I can see what it looks like. And if I follow along with that assignment guide, so I want to get rid of, you know, questions, let's see, 32 and 33. So I'll go here to, re to uh, Math Excel, go down to questions 32 and question 33, hit the trash can button and it gets rid of it. 33, same thing. So this is how I can eliminate questions. And so for those students who have shortened assignments as part of their IEP, uh, this is one of the ways that you can do that. You can remove those questions. What's nice about this is then if you assign this to your students, remember you're going to assign your Math Excel assignment to your whole class, but maybe to your student who has an IEP, uh, they get the shortened assignment. Well, guess what? No one knows they got a shortened assignment. It just automatically shows up for them if you assign it to that student in particular. And uh, it looks exactly the same, except they just have fewer questions. All right. So we, we do our edit. You get the idea. And when I'm finished, I click the Done button. And when I click Done, it's going to save that version. Um, and then I can go back, customize it again, save another version. I can have up to five different versions saved simultaneously. And they're going to live under this versions drop down. So I click versions. So these are the um, the two versions. Instead of calling it, oops, let me go back. Instead of calling it basic, I call it standard. So some kids can be offended by that word basic. Uh, so I just call it standard. The standard version is based on that basic um, assignment guide. And then the advanced, you know, I, I chose questions for that. And then from here, I can assign it to the specific students. So I'm going to assign the advanced student, uh, the advanced to my advanced students here. I created a group for advanced. And then when I click assign, it will go out to them. Uh, one of the things about groups, your students will never know that they're in a group. There's no indication, no names, only you know the names of the groups and who's in a particular group. All right. So that's what Math Excel is. Lesson quizzes, you can edit those and they look, the, the edit process looks very similar. The difference though with lesson quizzes, and if, so if you refer to this page here and the red dot assessments, lesson quizzes and tests, is that there are no help features. Um, every student gets exactly the same problem. And uh, these are designed, you know, to be really your, you know, high stakes you, you consider high stakes assessments because they don't have those help features well what about those students who do like to you know copy off their buddy well you can actually scramble the question order and have up to five different versions so um, if i go to customize process looks the same but now i can rearrange and you know go here and drop that there click done and um, you know, I can save this. And now this, you know, quiz that I've just customized, I can assign to a group that I set up. Group A, you know, for, for quiz A. So that's another way that you can customize is by rearranging uh, questions and things. All right. So we've talked a little bit about customizing uh, assignments. We've talked a little bit about the different types of assignments that are available to you and your students. Um, let me pause there and see if you guys have any questions about 
the assignment types or, or how to customize or how to create the assignments. Joe, are there any questions? Carlton's nothing has come up on that. If I could just real quick, Valerie and Heather, you asked a couple of very good questions that uh, since we're running low on time, we're going to let Carlton finish and do what he needs to do. And uh, if anybody who could stay on, like I said, we're going to try to get to your personal accounts and um, answer some of these internal questions of Modesto City um, without taking up Carlton's time. So you're good to go, Carlton, with what you need to do here. All right, Next. cool. So, so um, again, you can assign any of these components in a lesson to your students, and that means it will show up on their desktop and that they need to do it and submit it as an assignment for you to, to get data uh, from them if you want to. I do recommend that you, you be um, uh, dis discriminating about how much you assign to your students uh, because it can be overwhelming. Uh, but there's a really cool tool that you can use to help your students when it comes to keeping up with their assignments. So, for instance, if you want to assign, you know, instead of the whole thing, you just want to assign some of the important stuff. I want my students to do this. I want my students to look at this example. And I want them to do, you know, this math Excel assignment and this lesson quiz. All right. So I chose those four things. You notice how the four check marks. I am going to... Um, Add selected to playlist. Now I could assign all four as a block assignment, um, and 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 that's okay. It's similar to playlist, but what a playlist will do is, um, and I'll call this create new playlist. Let's call this seven dash four playlist. All right, and create playlist. So this playlist will allow me to now I'll go to playlist. The shows the four different things I've assigned. I can uh, change the order if I want. That way I can make sure students are accessing things in the right order. I should have assigned a video. That would have been uh, a video is available. I, I could have assigned that. That would might have been a nice thing to drag to the top so I'd know my students are starting off with the video. Anyway, I can drag and drop in the, the order I wanted. I can add additional items later. Um, and then when I'm ready, I can assign all to my students. Let me, sh let me show you what that looks like when I assign all. Um, and it basically bundles all of these things together. And this way, my students will get this assignment as a bundled assignment that looks like this. So now we're going to click on the classes tab at the top of the page. And I have a class here called Algebra 1. And when I click on that Algebra 1 class, this shows me all the assignments I have created. Eventually. And then I can. Huh. All right. Well, that isn't that nice. Okay. So here are my classes. I'll click on this, the assignments button on my uh, class list. Not sure what's going on here. There's my students. Let's see if I can go to assignments from here. Um, and then I can, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Good. I can preview that playlist. I click the component. Now your students would just click on it and it will open automatically. Uh, but for me as a, as a teacher, I need to click preview. And this is what the assignment looks like. All four of those components are assigned as, as part of that playlist. When I click on the first item in that list, Notice how everything appears as a tab along the top, top of the page. And so this is just a, a very quick and easy way for me to keep up as a student, for me to keep up with what I need to, to work on. And then I can go from one tab to the next. When I'm finished, I'll submit the whole thing as a bundle. And then as a teacher, I'll get, you know, uh, feedback on, on that, or I'll get the data on that assignment. So going back to assignments. And this is where we'll switch over to data. Talk about that in the last few minutes that we have. To uh, view data, down here I have uh, a quiz that I gave uh, some time ago, and 19 of 36 students completed this quiz. If I click on it, this pane pops up that we saw before. I can click view student status, and this uh, tells me which students have not started it yet, uh, which students have completed it. It's just a very quick way for me to you know, see student status. Um, I'll go back. 
I can edit the assignment from that pop up uh, if I want to, and um, uh, you know, so forth. Now, this data tab here, this is where you'll get that alphabetized list of students and their performance. So I click data, and then these, this is uh, you know every student and their score on this particular assessment. Always, um, uh, anything that's in color is typically a hyperlink. So if I want to see, you know, uh, oh, how did James T. Kirk here do on this? Oh man, he didn't do so well. Let's look at let's look at Mad Max. So I'll I can click on uh, no, not this one. Sorry, my bad. It's the next tabs. All right. So when it when it comes to um, your scores and things like that, I can view scores from classes. Click on assignments. I can get some information here. Assignments by student is another way to identify, you know, assignments. And I can actually, you know, click on a, a particular student and see that student's work summarized here. But data is really where you're going to spend most of your time. So I click data, algebra one, and I see these graphics that pop up. Each one of these graphics, if you'll notice, as I hover over uh, a bar, the name of the, uh, the title of the assignment pops up. I can click on that bar, and then this gives me you know, specific data. So I can tell that Rocky Balboa spent 24 minutes on this. Uh, you know, uh, Katniss, Everdeen, 32 minutes. All right, so the bottom graph is usage. The middle graph is progress, how many students in your class have done it. But it's the top graph where you're going to get most of your interesting data. So I'm going to click on this bar right here. And uh, when I do, um, the first tab to pop up is standards analysis. If more than one standard was tested, I'll see more columns, right? This, this assessment only looked at one standard. But um, if I test more than one standard, more columns will pop up. I can, uh, you know, um, click the next one is question analysis. This is uh, uh, really convenient because this tells me, you know, I can get an idea of how many students struggled with a particular question, you know, by looking at these these graphs here. And I can actually preview the question to, I can go from student to student to see what their responses were. And then finally, at the top of the page, or um, we can go to student analysis and uh, you know see what their responses were in more detail. And finally, at the end is performance analysis. And this is where I can set a threshold score, and I can break down the uh, class into you know two different groups if I want. Those who scored above a certain threshold, those who scored below. Let's make this 80% instead. And then it will automatically divide my class. And this way I can very quickly assign resources to these two ad hoc groups that I've just created. And so I would click add, res assign resources, you know, choose a resource I want to assign. If uh, I want to drag and drop students from one side to the other, I can. And even kids who haven't uh, taken the assignment yet, I can drag those uh, as well. So. This is another way that you can, uh, you know, assign to, to groups of students. All right, so folks, I know that we have covered a lot and we have gone through a lot. There, there's uh, about two minutes left. And I thank you for your patience and I thank you for your perseverance and, and just wanting to know what all this stuff is. There's no way you're going to remember everything, but, but the, the one thing that I ask you please to remember is how to access those help features. And so again, that's at the top of the page with the question mark and then help for this page. Click that open a new window that gives you this nice drop down view of, you know, how to I'm sure you guys are going to have questions about groups. Well, there you go. If you click, if you look at classes, it'll tell you how to create groups. And then the other place to go, uh, if I click that question mark is my Savage training by clicking program training. And that will take you to the, to the MySavis training uh, web page. And then the last thing, as you guys are wrapping up any, any questions or asking any other questions that you might have, last thing I need to show you guys is a, um, 
And Joe, I don't know if you can send out links. Maybe I could forward this link to you. Uh, but uh, this is a, a, a survey link. If you guys could go on to that survey and let us know what you think about the, the training, that would be great too. But anyway, thank you for your time. Uh, Joe, is there anything last minute that we need to, to cover? So there are no other questions that I've seen come up uh, that would be for you right now, Carlton. I will ask teachers, we want to honor your time. It is 11 a.m. Um, if you can do me this, remember, I'm not I'm taking attendance by the uh, good morning you did at the beginning. And maybe right now, if you can just send me your role and what site you're at, uh, even though I know, but and it could just be real quick, initials, resource specialist, RS, whatever school you're at. If you just send me that real quick in your uh, in the chat box, and then uh, I will be completing attendance. Uh, Veronica just put in, you'll see the link to this feedback for Carlton. And uh, like Carlton said, there's a lot of information for you here. Um, there's no way in two hours. Uh, this is a training that normally would be an entire day, uh, six hours in person. So dealing with what we're dealing with right now, this is uh, what we could do. Um, I do also want to tell you guys that uh, Jason Skeen, who was in on this entire um, training today, he was our uh, Modesto City School pilot teacher for SDC. He's at Davis High School, so he would be a, a, an outstanding resource for you as well as you're trying to see how you would use, use this. It's, it's going to be overwhelming right now. You've got a lot of information, uh, so play around with it a little bit, um, and it, it is pretty user-friendly, uh, definitely compared to things before. So with that, Carlton, thank you so much. And uh, remember, Veronica Davalos and I will be staying uh, online here. If you guys would like to try to get your own personal accounts, um, we, will, we will do that. We'll show you how to log in to hopefully what will be your personal account. So thank you, Carlton and, and Julia, you're still on. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you bet. And uh, guys, I hope you all have a great school year. Uh, stay healthy and I look forward to seeing you in person someday. Yeah, thank you all for your time. Thank you, guys. OK, so with that, um, we are going to have one of our uh, Modesto City School techs joining us here in a few. Um, and until then, uh, some questions came up earlier in the past with Schoology. Valerie, your question about uh, multiple platforms can be difficult for students, and we agree with that definitely. Um, it does not do the um, grade back with Schoology that um, uh, some other programs do, and uh, it really is its own platform. So I think in Schoology, you would want to show t uh, show your students where to go, like how to access Realize, and it's actually going to be an app on their um, in their app portal. So I, I I don't know if we'll have a big problem with that. Um, so hopefully I've answered that a little bit, Valerie. And then Heather, as far as the split screen goes, remember everything opens in a new uh, tab. So I think you could just, you know, make one screen smaller and put them side by side. I don't, I don't know how that's going to look on those small devices, though. Um, definitely uh, great questions. And as you guys know, we this is a year unlike any other for sure. Uh, let's see. I'm going to stop the recording right now, and then I'm going to show you guys how to get into your teacher accounts and know that. Um, Tech is doing a lot with this. Last week we were hoping to have this all done so you guys would be able to do it. Um, and in fact, if it'll be different for me because I'm already in on the system. If someone wouldn't mind being our guinea pig right now to uh, to share their screen and we will walk you through how to get to your account, that might be better for us. So um, Jason, would you mind doing that? Are you still? In on us, uh, Jason Skeen, would you mind being the one we try to get to do this? Uh, yeah, hold on, let me share my screen real quick. All right. I just put into the chat the um, open a browser. Yeah, go up there and put. Let's see. Did it just show up? I'm not seeing it. Do you see my launchpad.classlink.com? No, hold on. Let me look. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're you can just write out uh, launchpad. Type in launchpad. Dot classlink. Dot 